do do Hello. Hey. I think we're back. Hi, everybody. Welcome to this week's Learning Space. I am your host, Nicole Gallucci, postdoc with CosmoQuest. Uh, I have with me our guest, Co uh, Kevin Govender, who's down in or Cape Town. <laughs> what direction is south? I don't know. <laughs> <laughs> You mean up in Cape Town, depending how you look at it. Right? It's true, up in Cape Town. Cape Town, one of my favorite places to visit. Um, and uh, Georgia may be joining us in a little bit. Uh, she just got back from uh, a weekend away, so uh, she may be joining us a little late. Uh, I apparently... Uh, <laughs> so I see you guys having um, conversation over in the comment thread for the CosmoQuest event. Apparently something's gone wonky with the Q&A. Uh, there is a new feature called Showcase, which I, I enabled, um, which says something about sharing links with your audience. So I went ahead and gave that a try, and apparently that broke the Q&A. Uh, so apologies for that. If you're not able to get into the Q&A, go ahead and use the comment thread on the CosmoQuest event for this. Um, I will be checking that. Um, so hi, Nancy. Hi, Guido. I see you've got a couple of our, our regular viewers. Uh, and hello to everyone who couldn't make it because it's apparently rush hour for a lot of you guys in, in the EU. So uh, <laughs> this isn't our normal time, apparently. Um, but I want to thank Kevin for joining us because it is it is late in the evening uh, for you over in Cape Town. You've got babies to put to bed soon. Yeah, sorry, the, the rush hour was my fault. I had to no, do it a little bit earlier. It's <laughs> so fine. Sorry no. to anyone who got caught in rush hour. Anything for the Astro Babies, man. Astro Babies. <laughs> guys. So I am going to go ahead and try and fire up, see what the showcase app does. You guys who are watching can let me know uh, what it does. I have no idea. I just shared a link for the IAU, Office of Astronomy Development, which is what we're going to be talking about today. Um, so here we go. Click Show Item. Yeah, so if you guys can let me know in the comments how that's working for you and if you can get the Q&A working, that would be awesome. Um, we're going to go ahead and so go, please use the comment thread uh, to, to ask questions and, and leave comments as you guys normally would since I borked the Q&A app. Yay! Uh, <laughs> so Kevin, uh, can you tell us a little bit about what is overall the Office of Astronomy Development for the IAU? Okay, so um, so so first the name we it, it, it's called the Office of Astronomy for Development. Mm -hmm. So <clears throat> uh, um, the the IAU came up with this strategic plan in uh, 2009 and. Uh, um, uh, well, first, who's the IAU? It's the International Astronomical Union. It's the um, it's it's basically the world's body of professional astronomers. And you know, at the moment, I think there's over eleven thousand astronomers that are that are part of this professional society. In two thousand and nine, uh, their general assembly, uh, um, which is you know the biggest gathering of astronomers around the world, adopted this plan to say basically, how can we use astronomy? to make the world a better place. And so uh, uh, so the strategic plan was based on the idea that astronomy has links into all the, the, the sort of key factors making that, that, that we use to measure the levels of development. Uh, it deals with science and technology. Uh, it deals with research. Uh, um, uh, but it also deals with culture and society. Um, and you know, having this field that straddles all these different areas uh, gives it quite a quite a unique place in the um, in the global landscape. Now, how can we use that that you know coolness of astronomy to straddle all these different areas: technology, science, culture, um, uh, and stimulate development around the world? And so, the strategic plan was born. And our office was set up to make that strategic plan happen. We basically are, are, are the implementing body for that for that plan. So, so is this kind of an answer to the the question? I don't know if you get, but I get sometimes. What is astronomy good for? Like, why are we st studying astronomy? Uh, how, do, well, how does astronomy contribute to development? Yeah. Uh, um, so, how shall I answer that? It's a it's a convenient answer because that's kind of what we're doing, mm -hmm. but it wasn't the purpose of 
why they set it up. You know, uh, I think I think I think that must be made clear. It's that it's that the office was set up because because the guys you know in the astronomy field you know thought wait a minute our science is so cool we get inspired by it because there's so many people that get inspired by it if you sit on a plane with someone they you know you tell them you're an astronomer and and you've got a conversation for the rest of the plane ride right. uh, um, you know it's it's this field that inspires people and it was the recognition that that there's a strength of this field and that strength can be used to stimulate education and development around the world and that's why it was set up mm -hmm. but yeah you know often people say okay well why invest in astronomy well look at what these guys are doing well yeah we're we're kind of trying to use astronomy to make the world a better place uh, um, and how are we doing that I mean it's you know at the end of the day you gotta ask yourself well what do we mean by development what do we mean by making the world a better place? Uh, you know, if uh, the 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 stance that I've always taken myself, and 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 I think is 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 in line with this plan, is that we the 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 only hope we have of of making a positive impact in the world is to empower people to solve the challenges themselves that they face. And how do you empower people? You you basically empower them by educating them, by empowering their mind, by helping people to think, helping people to become problem solvers. Astronomy is one of those fields that that you know that that ability to capture just about anyone, uh, um, you know, with the scale, the beauty of the universe. Um, it helps to to create a spark that 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 brings people, pulls people into asking questions, into learning, and so and so our job here is to uh, uh, fuel that spark. You know, we 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 we're trying to use astronomy as a gateway into education fields. And so our three focus areas are university level science and research, school level maths and science education, and public understanding of science. So so we you know it's basically you can think of it as using astronomy to stimulate education, sort of cradle to grave. Cool, cool. So, what um, what kind of projects do you coordinate or run? I know you've got the um, the grant proposal program, which is happening right now. Can you tell us a little bit about about that. Yeah. So, so one of the 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 biggest activities of uh, of the OAD at the moment is is to have an annual call for proposals. It's basically you know this uh, uh, um, throwing it out to the world and saying, you know, we don't have all the ideas, so what ideas do you have to use astronomy to make a difference in your area, in your neighborhood, uh, um, or in your country, in your region? And so uh, this annual call for proposals, uh, which is open at the moment, uh, um, uh, looks for projects, or especially innovative ideas in those three areas, university, schools, and public. And um, and then we fund these projects. Usually, you know, it's it's... Um, it's seed funding to test out projects all around the world and uh, if we find something that's really cool we take those projects and incubate them at the OAD and see if we can expand them <coughs> and so excuse me sorry I, I got a bit of a cold as well yeah. <coughs> um, so 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 uh, uh, at the moment uh, um, in 2013 was the first uh, implementation of projects we had 18 projects around the world in 2014 uh, we had 23 projects and now the call is open for projects for 2015 and the closing date is the end of August. <coughs> um, I can give you some examples of projects sure. as well. Yeah. <coughs> so, yeah, I'd so, like to know kind of so, what, what you've gotten. Yeah, uh, you know, uh, it's been it's been so cool. Uh, um, you, you've you've shared the website, right? Uh, uh, on yes. the on the home page of the website, there's a map where people can click on on the on the on the different pins. Uh, um, but on the university level, you know, it's mainly uh, schools for young astronomers. Uh, um, uh, there's one cool project that that looks at creating sort of a telescope control room in universities. So that students can uh, um, can basically access robotic telescopes from their home universities. So they just need an internet connection and a computer lab, and then and then basically use a telescope, access data, and it it 
it sort of opens up uh, um, uh, uh, the field to people all around all around the world uh, um, um, to access data and to and to do science. Um, uh, on the school level, there's a lot of interesting projects uh, ranging from teacher training activities uh, 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 to the production of, of different resources. Um, one really cool one was astronomy for the visually impaired. Um, where there was a kit produced and and um, and we sort of adopted this a bit and 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 uh, are trying to expand it. Um, you know, uh, um, how do you teach astronomy to someone who can't see? Uh, um, and and there's resources that we developed in Spain and we're trying to expand on this project. Um, astronomy for the public. There's all sorts of really cool activities. There's uh, astronomy meets uh, uh, art uh, that was held in Colombia. Um, there's a very cool one in China where it, it, it looks at uh, um, um, taking ancient Chinese poetry and mapping it against modern astrophotography. Um, uh, there's a program in the U.S. actually that uh, um, that takes Struggling into the Ronald McDonald homes uh, um, uh, to 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 use. Use telescopes, use astronomy to inspire the the young children that are uh, undergoing treatment and and their families in the area. So it, it's 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 sort of like a whole diverse range of, of activities. Uh, um, and and you know the the challenge for us and and the well, it's a cool challenge is now to to take all this experience and build a a sort of best practice mm. database. <coughs> that can that can feed other projects. So the projects are constantly building on the shoulders of others, so that you know in five years' time we don't have a repeat of of, of similar project ideas, but rather building on and on. Um, and so hopefully this will expand. So at the moment we're overseeing <coughs> something like 41 projects around the world, uh, uh, um, but uh, uh, you know. The, the projects that don't get funded but which are still good enough to to that, that we feel are good enough to be funded they go onto a sort of a wish list and we keep fundraising for them as well yes I was going to ask about the wish list uh, the wish list next because you got a lot more proposals than you were able to fund uh, was last year the first grant call uh, <coughs> Uh, no, no, no. Uh, uh, so the first grant call went out in 2012, okay. uh, um, and so the projects were implemented in 2013, and then 2013 was the second one. Gotcha. So the first one, we had 191 proposals, mm -hmm. uh, of which we were able to fund 18. Uh, in the second call, it increased to 230 proposals, so we had like a 20% increase from... Right. from Year one to year two, and and this is in spite of like a ten percent success rate, you know. So it, 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 um, it, it's really a, an area where people are keen to 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 put good ideas on the table, and so uh, of that one hundred and thirty proposals, we were only able to fund twenty three, mm -hmm. and uh, um, <clears throat> and so that that wish list is on the on the OED website at the moment. And so the idea is is to is to you know encourage the projects to uh, uh, either crowdfund or approach different institutions uh, um, uh, and you know ultimately as we build up our 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 base our experience of uh, uh, you know on, in the in the fundraising scene we'll be able to get a more structured sort of format where you know wishless projects automatically get into a uh, um, a crowdfunding platform or something mm. like that. We're always looking for hackers to help us conceptualize and, 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 and implement things like this as well. I, you just brought up hackers, so we met at Dot Astronomy, I think, which is um, where, yeah. where the concept of hacking is is such a, uh, a big deal and really important to us. Can you maybe uh, just define that for people who aren't familiar with that? Yeah, well, hacking is basically it's it's tinkering. It's it's, it's being able to to uh, <coughs> take a problem and then find a solution to it. So so you know um, you come up with a cool idea and then and then find tools online. Uh, um, uh, sometimes coding is required, but basically to come up with a solution. To give you an example. Uh, um, a cool little hack that we did once was uh, uh, um, was to take all the nonprofit 
organizations in South Africa. Uh, and there, there, there was a there's a database of about 80,000 nonprofit organizations, but in big spreadsheets. And we just used Google Fusion tables and 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 pulled it all into a you know nice graphical sort of representation. And it's been super popular. So that was that was one that my wife Carolina and I did. Uh, <laughs> we were we were in, uh, we 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 had a hack. Uh, um, uh, 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 we took part in a hackathon over a weekend, and this is this is what this the hacking community is cool for: is that you know you get together over a weekend, hack together something cool, and then you got a you know almost a, a, a usable product at the end of it. And so and so we did this over a weekend, but it's so useful for mm -hmm. journalists and for NGOs for volunteers. Uh, and so that's that's basically an example of a hack. Yeah, we've done uh, many different projects at the Hack Day at Dot Astro. Um, so some of you guys might be following. Um, uh, the, there's a Twitter, there's a astronomy tweets account, which a different astronomer every week uh, gets to host the account. It's kind of off the real scientist model. So, uh, so that came out of a Hack Day project. Um, some of the videos that we've put out have come out of Hack Day projects. Not all coding, but a lot of it is is coding and solving problems in a, in a really kind of crowdsourced group brain board kind of way. Borg in a good sense. <laughs> yeah, and it's awesome to have so many people. I mean, what's really cool about Donald astronomy is that is that you know you never work on just one hack. You know, there, there's there's always people working on different things, and so you know sometimes you need someone to strategize, to conceptualize, someone to hack, uh, someone to code, someone to do some searches for cool stuff that that can be applicable and and that that vibe is what a hackathon what makes a hackathon really productive at the end of the day right 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 um uh sorry i got distracted looking at the dot astronomy stuff <laughs> for this year <laughs> 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 which it's finals week here so I, I i wasn't able to to uh to sign up unfortunately even though it's in chicago which is like a few <laughs> hours away from me <laughs> Yeah, I, I uh, we 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 both really regret not being able to come. Carolina is like dying to come to it, but uh, yeah, now with a with a two year old and a newborn, it's it's. <laughs> well, when Don Astronomy South Africa happens. <laughs> <laughs> we'll absolutely, <eat> absolutely. <laughs> totally. Um. So what? So so you've already had a couple of these these projects going that have been funded um through the Astronomy for Development Office. Uh, what kind of outcomes are are you seeing from those programs? So it varies so much, and uh, um, and so after after the first year, we took the experience that we gained from the first year of running running these projects, and we put together a monitoring and evaluation framework, mm -hmm. and we call it a framework because what you're asking is, is, is you know it varies from project to project so much. You can have a teacher training project that reaches ten teachers. Uh, in a really intensive way, and then you could have like uh, uh, you know a big media star party that 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 reaches a whole you know few hundred people. Um, um, but we 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 built this framework to try and say okay, what is it? What what are the outcomes that you're expecting from your project, and <coughs> and 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 how do you measure it? How do you keep track of these things? Um, uh, what we're what we're trying to do now, uh, so so that was the first year. So the projects that are being implemented this year, part of their grant agreements is to is to build in this monitoring and evaluation framework. So at the end of this year, when we get our reports, we can look at okay, how did you model your, how, how did you keep track of the outcomes of your project? Mm -hmm. But there's one step further: is what is the impact that you're having? And that's a really tough question. So we're tackling that this year. You know, uh, um, we've partnered with the Institute for Monitoring and Evaluation here at the University of Cape Town, and we're looking at this as you know, you you have this idea of astronomy for development. Mm -hmm. Astronomy development it doesn't seem to you know gel. <laughs> you know, uh, uh, um, they don't seem to be. Uh, uh, um, one leading to the other, but we're trying to develop a a a, a, um, a framework for impact evaluation uh, that actually, hopefully, will be able to say in you know in 2020 when we look back five years, uh, uh, we'll be able to say 
we set out to achieve this, and and this is the impact that our programs have made. And this is this is a non-trivial thing because it's like saying, well, if I run a teacher workshop and I inspire 10, 15 teachers, how do I how do I measure the impact that that will have? Uh, um, and then you know the question comes out. Well, did they did they watch uh, um, uh, um, Carl Sagan or uh, uh, um, uh, uh, you know, uh, did, did they see something else inspiring that uh, contributed more to their inspiration than my workshop? Mm -hmm. So it's almost like doing a, 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 a you know one of these pharmaceutical trials uh, 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 where you need to sort of build a, a an environment where you have a control and yeah it, it's 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 quite a complex topic but yeah. but this is part of part of what we want to get to is 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 that we want to always keep our eye on the ball of we want to make the world a better place we want to have impact and we want to be able to genuinely measure that we don't you know it's really easy to inspire people with astronomy to inspire large numbers of people with astronomy mm -hmm. but so what 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 does that mean you know how how does that impact on 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 the larger scale challenges that we face in this world i mean look at look at the news headlines in the past couple of weeks you know yeah. uh, um, um, what are we doing to impact on the craziness that goes on in the world today and 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 that's where we're heading you know that's that's what we want to see if we if we can inspire people to sort of you know every time they see the moon they think well you know the perspective of 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 space. Uh, uh, you know, uh, uh, takes away the 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 minor differences that we have amongst human beings, uh, uh, amongst life on planet Earth, uh, uh, and even broadens people's minds, makes people more tolerant. Then we're achieving something. But that's that's sort of sounds nice. How do you actually measure that? And 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 that's sort of the direction that we're trying to get at. Well, both of us are trained in physical sciences. I mean, even though astronomy isn't necessarily something you could poke and prod in a lab, we're used to measurements and numbers and error bars. And, and human yeah. subject research is a whole other ball of wax, which I've also started getting into. And it's like, oh, my God, <laughs> it's messy. Uh, i tell you what, yeah, and, and, and it's hard. It's, you know, it's, it's, uh, that's, that's sort of what I find interesting as well is that, you know, it's almost like uh, um, natural sciences are easy because it's it's very it's it's very mathematical. You know, you you've got a clear cause and effect, and then you get to people, and it, there's this mush of stuff. You know, you got to take so many things into consideration. Uh, I mean, people are just you know you can't say uh, uh, you know assume this person is a ball. And right, right. A spherical yeah. person. A spherical person. <laughs> <laughs> a frictionless <And> feet. <laughs> yeah. Exactly, exactly. Um, but that's 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 the challenge because you know I really believe that we can we can make a difference. You know uh, that that we can do something. I mean, look, astronomy is not going to change the world on its own. It's 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 just one tool, you know. But it's a tool that we know, and it's a tool that 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 we can use in some way. So so let's contribute into the mix, and 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 contribute into the mix in a way where we're not trying to get the warm and fuzzy feeling of, uh, you know, making people smile. We're trying to get something deeper. We're trying to have a a, a deeper impact on society, uh, and 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 how we go about that. We're gonna have to embrace every bit of science, uh, uh, you know, every field of science, whether it's the social sciences and the natural sciences and technologies, and 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 and, and try to come up with something that 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 would make a meaningful impact. Yeah, I had a sociology professor in in college. And I was a senior physics major when I took her class, and she's like, you guys have it easy because you can, you know, you have things you can measure in variables. And now I get it. Now I get it. <laughs> All these years later, I got to go back and tell her. I, exactly. I get what you're talking about. People are fascinating, and learning how people learn is fascinating, but it's hard. It is. It is. It's very, very hard. So, um, so do you have collaborations of, of all types of professionals that are working on these task forces? With yeah, yeah, absolutely. So, 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 so each of the uh, um, each of the target areas, universities, schools, and public, 
um, uh, we've got these task forces. So they are groups of people that are nominated by the IEU based on their expertise and their experience in that particular area. Um, so we've got people who 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 have been uh, you know running schools in various parts of the world uh, um, who have come on board on our on our university's task force. We've got. Uh, um, uh, people like Rosa Duran, who runs the Galileo teacher training program on our uh, um, task force for children in schools, and that's headed up by Pedro Russo, who, who, who now runs the Universe Awareness program, used to run the International Year of Astronomy. Uh, um, Ed Gomez, Las Combres uh, Observatory Global Telescope Network. Um, task Force 3, we've got uh, uh, Ian Robson, who, who's, who's sort of mm -hmm. Huge in the UK, uh, yeah. uh, uh, um, uh, former head of SCFC, and, <coughs> and and sort of one of the initiators of the communicating astronomy with the public community, uh, um, and of course Carolina Odman, who used to run Universe Awareness Program and uh, 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 has since moved to South Africa. No one knows why, but uh, <laughs> no one knows why. <laughs> She's sitting in the back, next <laughs> <at> you. <laughs> Uh, you can probably say hello to her if she's uh, not too busy with. If she wants, yeah. <laughs> uh, but I think I think I think the little men need. Okay, a at woman. least one of your one of your children has a Twitter account, so it's not their first time on <laughs> yeah. the internet. Exactly. We we're we're not thinking. Hmm. You know, uh, 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 the new one is gonna is gonna grow up and think, where's my Twitter account? How come there's no tweets from me when I was a kid? <laughs> Oh, jealous. No, we should have started at Astro Baby 2014. Astro Baby 2014. <laughs> sure, sure. Totally reasonable. Totally reasonable. Oh my gosh. Um, so you've got different um, uh, kind of different regional uh, focuses, regional coordination. Can you tell us about maybe the differences in these regions and their different needs and, and um, goals? Yeah, absolutely. So you know, one of the the guiding principles uh, that we built the OAD on uh, has been one of humility. It's it's to it's to really take the approach that you know there's no way that one central office is going to be able to know all the needs of the world. It's, there's no way we're going to be able to say this is works best in this culture or this region. And so the idea with regional nodes and and language centers. So there's there's two things. There's there's regional nodes which looks at a geographic region, mm -hmm. and there's language centers which looks at a language or a cultural region. So uh, so at the moment we've got three regional nodes: one in China for East Asia, one in Thailand for the Southeast Asian region, and one in Ethiopia for East Africa. And uh, uh, the, uh, um, in China, we also have a language center which looks at the Chinese language globally. Mm -hmm. So, so, so if you look globally, you know, there's, there's, um, like, like for example, we've been exploring how to get the uh, uh, French-speaking community around the world to have a regional uh, uh, node or a, a, a sort of. A, a language center, sorry, and and so 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 the idea with this is that each of these nodes is an office with at least one full-time staff member. Sometimes it's more, sometimes it's it's shared staff members, but basically uh, um, they advise and coordinate activities within that particular region. So, for example, if 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 there's if there's a, a, a really cool project proposal for East Africa. Then I'll go to the guys in Ethiopia who host the East African Regional Node, and I'll say, you know, guys, isn't there some local funding that we can get to make this project happen? Or, uh, 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 you know, I'm not sure whether this this project is feasible. Tell me whether it's feasible in your region, and they will have the local knowledge and the, uh, uh, um, be able to advise. So, so, so you know, everything. Uh, I mean, we're we're an office of three people. You know, the OED is 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 very small, and uh, but we've got these you know about 30 people on the task forces who advise us on each of the areas of university, schools, and public. Then we've got regional nodes that advise us on the regions. Then we've got 
you know, oversight committees. Uh, um, uh, at the moment, uh, just a few days ago, we just launched an open review as well, where we open up to members of the public or anyone that's heard of the OED to also, you know, have a say and 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 and, and try to. Uh, 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 help conceptualize what will be the best way to use astronomy to stimulate development. Uh, um, so it's 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 really you know based on that principle of you know let's 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 move this idea forward in a way where we accept and embrace ideas from different parts of the world and um, and from people at all levels. Uh, you know this is not something where astronomers are going to tell us this is the way it's done. It, we, we need to uh, uh, embrace the whole world. So you mentioned this this open review which anyone could participate in. Are there other ways that people uh, can help out, lend their expertise, uh, help out either in their own community or, or the global effort? Anyone who's interested? Yeah, absolutely, absolutely. Uh, um, so uh, um, so there's a number of ways. Uh, um, on the on the OED website, there's uh, um, the opportunities. Uh, um, I don't know where I, I should post this. I, I, I didn't ask you beforehand where I can just copy links and stuff. But oh, I, uh, I can try and do that. Although I think I broke the Q and A up doing that, but I can do that. If, uh, uh, just let me know okay, what you well. share. Anyway, it's 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 the. Uh, uh, um, oh, oh, one um, thing for for uh, anyone who's just listening to the audio version, the website that we're sharing is astro, www.astro, the number four, dev, d e v dot org. So you can go there. It'll be in the show. It'll be in the show links. Yeah. Oh, you sent me a link. So, Tiny. so so uh, I think that's longer than it needs to be. But um, but but basically, uh, um, uh, um, there's. Uh, there's there's one really exciting program that 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 we just launched called the OED Visiting Fellowships Program, which is short visits to work with the OED in Cape Town. Uh, on the on the OED website, there's something. Uh, um, actually, uh, uh, this is probably a better better list to post. This is this is the OED ideas list. Mm. So this is a list of ideas that we pick up from people you know that interact with us. Uh, um, from all around the world, and 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 it's it's ideas that we would like to make happen, but we don't have the 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 sort of hands to make it happen, and so so there's there's you know there's a whole variety of skills that uh, um, that 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 we need. We've got a bunch of volunteers. There's 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 hundreds of volunteers that have registered their skills on the OED website. Uh, um, people are welcome to do that. Uh, um, uh, you can also request a volunteer. So if you have a if you have a program uh, uh, that you need particular skills, then you can you can either uh, um, um, drop us an email or just fill out your needs on the on the on the volunteers page. If you want to contribute your skills, you can register your needs. And uh, um, uh, that ideas list is something where you know, if you're a if you're a computer programmer, there's there's some really cool uh, uh, um, ideas that we would like implemented. Uh, like, for example, you know, we need someone to revamp our entire website. You know, it, it's it's something we just you know, there's there's three of us. We got to manage all these projects. We got to we got <laughs> handle all these things. There's just some things that we don't get around to. But there's also cool ideas like you know, uh, how how would we like you know, if a small office has to coordinate all this, it's gonna it's gonna become unwieldy. How do you crowdsource everything? You know, uh, the, this was this was an idea that uh, uh, um, uh, it was during a conversation with Michelle Wilmers at at uh, Open UCT, uh, uh, um, sort of the open data movement here mm -hmm. in Cape Town, uh, um, and and it was the idea of crowdsourcing everything. What if what if the idea generation was crowdsourced? So people generated ideas, but didn't bother about who implemented them. So give freely your ideas about how to use astronomy for development. Then what if you crowdsourced the implementation so that people, you know, anyone can just pick up an idea and and become the project leader for that. Then crowdsource the evaluation so you know people can evaluate. Uh, uh, um, uh, and say this this is the proposal we should fund. Then crowdsource the funding. Then crowdsource uh, uh, you know the the implementation. And then 
crowdsourced evaluation. I mean, it's it's a it's a concept, you know. But how do you make the entire process self-sustaining to a certain extent, where where you know you can almost have a machine that's running uh, um, with with absolutely minimal intervention into it. So 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 it's so it's sort of ideas like that, you know. How can how can we take you know what we're doing to a whole new level. Um, uh, so if if people you know do want to contribute time, uh, um, they can either register as a volunteer. They can get in touch on one of the uh, um, ideas on the ideas list. Um, and if they if they want to score a trip to Cape Town, uh, um, you know, choose a nice big project and 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 start working on it and and we have these visiting fellowships it's it's sort of an unpaid uh, uh, you know we don't pay a person a salary but we cover all their costs to come to Cape Town uh, enjoy the sunshine and the beaches but uh, at the same time you know pull out something cool for the OED cool cool so there's okay oh did we just lose your audio uh, hello okay I can hear you there? sorry about that okay. <laughs> <laughs> so there's ideas out there. So for those of you watching or listening, there are lots of ways to volunteer. Uh, there are lots of ideas out there. I love this crowdsourced machine thing. That, 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 like, that, that in itself is a sociological experiment. <laughs> yeah, yeah. I think it'll be very cool too. <laughs> yeah. Um, because, because you know, what, what's cool about that is that it, it, it makes people stick to the bigger picture. Because usually if I have a cool idea, I, I have this attachment to that idea, like, you know, I want to see my baby through to completion. But it's this this thing that, you know, if I was, uh, you know, to give you an example, if I was stuck out on the street today, tomorrow, yeah. I would I would use all the resources that I have, all, all my experience, all my science training and everything to figure out a way to keep warm, to make food, to, uh, uh, you know, to to survive. Just because I'm not out on the street, why can't I contribute those ideas out there and have someone else use it who needs it? You know, and it, it's it's that sort of principle. It's that you know, if I have a cool idea, throw it out into the world and let someone take it because the implementation of that idea is more important than the praise or the credit that I might get by saying, "Hey, I thought of that idea." You know, and it's a it's a very it's it, it's it's a it's sort of a uh, um, a shift in thinking where where we we move away from 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 sort of uh, uh, um, uh, you know this natural human ego and into a phase where we 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 look at the bigger picture. We want to make the world a better place. Let me take my idea to make the world a better place. Throw it out into this 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 uh, pool somewhere and let someone grab it and run with it. And if it w happens, you know the world takes credit for it. Let's well, is back to that. Someone was just asking about hack days and hackathons in the comments. Um, this is like a, a full-scale version of taking that mentality to the whole project in a way. So instead of doing a small, exactly. you know, confined hackathon, you are taking that mentality bigger. Um, so hack day and hackathon, uh, just to, to clarify, isn't uh, anything. Uh, it, it's an it's a, it's, a, it's a concept that's used uh, by lots of different. It's used in politics now. You know, like people are hacking. You know, their local politics. Um, it's used in computer science, obviously. We use astronomy, um, but if you look up hackathon or hack day, you can find something near you. Um, the one I mentioned was the one coming up in Chicago in December. I think the um, the the um, update for that one is closed, um, but that's an astronomy specific one. So check out your local. I find a lot of stuff like that on meetups. You know, check out your local community, your local coding community. Um, there's lots of cool stuff like that, and this, and like you said, this is this is the crowdsourcing hacking on the the big scale that you're talking about. So, yeah. yeah. But there's lots of other there's lots of other ways people can help um, on the smaller scale right now. Uh, like you said, the uh, helping with the website or helping with specific projects. Um, you have like, translations. Uh, I see you have crowdsourced yeah. proofreading. <laughs> Yeah, that, that's an interesting one because, you know, lots of people who don't have English as their first language, you know, if there's a scientist, uh, um, you know, uh, they send a paper for review and if their English is not good, 
they are sometimes biased by the reviewer, you know, who yeah. thinks, oh well, this person is not that smart. And so sometimes you just need someone who 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 can who can uh, do an English proofread uh, um, uh, and not necessarily uh, uh, know the science. But anyway, these are these are ideas. You know, it's something that people have to have to bash around and 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 come up with the pros and cons and stuff. Cool. Very cool. Um, and then you you also mentioned that you have a visiting fellowship program starting up internship yep. fellowship. Can you tell us a little bit more about those? Yeah. So so we um, the visiting fellowship program is basically you know a uh, um, uh, free trip to Cape Town for your skills. You know uh, uh, um, if if uh, uh, if there's exceptional volunteers who who you know contribute. Cool stuff to to that ideas list uh, um, to hacking together some 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 nice stuff that we can use. Um, then we basically uh, um, will offer to fly them fly them to Cape Town, cover their accommodation and meals and stuff. Uh, um, no salary, but basically they they visit the OED, chill out in the cool city of Cape Town. Apparently it's been voted the number one tourist destination by both the, uh, I think it's the New York Times and the, and the Guardian. Wow. It's, yeah, it's, it's, it's like uh, uh, I, we live in the, in, the, in the number one tourist capital of 2014. Um, but the idea is, is that, you know, people, people get that experience in exchange for their skills, you know. So, so, so you know, uh, um, I'd rather have an enthusiastic uh, um, person with web skills come to the OED and bring their energy and bring their excitement, rather than hiring a web development company to oh. to put together the website. You know, it's it's part of sort of expanding that community and 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 and, and giving your people a chance to interact much more. Uh, you know, one on one with the OED as well. So these visiting fellowships are are completely open uh, um, um, and. Basically, it's 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 just you know let's if you're keen to start contributing something you know get in touch and and uh, um, and then we'll have sort of a small selection process with our steering committee in terms of of, of people's contributions and stuff and you and you almost like win a trip to Cape Town kind of thing. <laughs> Guys, Cape Town is awesome. I was only there for like a few days, bracketing my <laughs> Karoo trip, but it's it's really cool. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. They, they, they showed me um, the observatory and a whole bunch of stuff. Like my one day in Cape Town <laughs> is running on the waterfront. So just, just ran around did all things. Um, it's a really yeah. place. And, and you get to help save the world using astronomy. So Exactly, exactly. I mean, that's, that's, that's the biggest reward, I think. Um, so so that's, that's the idea of, of sort of opening it up. You know, with, with the internships, the idea is that, you know, young people wanting to have some experience, uh, uh, wanting to contribute to a bigger cause, get some training outside of their conventional university training. Uh, um, you know, I mean, think about it. You work with OED, you're immediately talking to people from different cultures, different parts of the world. Uh, you know, working with time zones that that end you up like rushing for bedtime for your kids. <laughs> uh, but you know, it's it, it, it's this 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 vibrant, dynamic environment where you 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 you're tackling something in a very in a very interesting way it's it's science for development mm -hmm. but not not the usual kind of like uh, you know let's develop technologies kind of development you know this is like trying to influence people's minds mm -hmm. and the most the most powerful resource that we have in the world today is it, it it's people's minds, you know. If if you, uh, uh, um, I I I say to people sometimes that you know the uh, the the most powerful uh, uh, um, um, the 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 most powerful characters in human history, whether it's 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 a good person or a really nasty person, they had one thing in common, and that was influencing people's minds. Yeah. The more you can influence how people think, the more you can you can impact on the world, and 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 you know what this 
whole idea is about is about trying to influence people to think for themselves. It's it's to influence it's to empower people with 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 the ability to make their own choices, make their decisions, and 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 solve the problems that they may might face. That that you know your teacher will never know. Uh, um, you know, when you when you when you, when you go to school, your teacher will teach you maths and science and these things. Uh, your teacher will never see the problems that you will solve, but your teacher has empowered you to to tackle those. And it's the same sort of idea, except that it's it's not sort of the teacher image that I want to convey. It's about it's about you know people people being inspired and 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 sort of having a desire to learn. And, and finding that knowledge themselves. Yeah, I got to see a little bit of that um, again when I was in Cape Town, um, because South Africa and and the African continent as a whole is is using. I'm biased towards radio astronomy, of course, but the square kilometer array effort <laughs> um, is, is they are taking advantage of that and building up the brain trust of the country and of the region, and really working hard to bring more young people into science and into astronomy to work with the telescope that's being built right there locally. Um, so I think I got to, I gave a, I gave a talk about our, our stuff out in the desert um, when I came back to Cape Town uh, to a group of students <laughs> who were working super hard to, to learn the astronomy. And so yeah, they're building the brain trust. They're using the fact that they're hosting one of the biggest telescopes in the world to build up that local brain trust. And I think that's, that's a fabulous uh, outcome. Absolutely. You know, uh, um, to people that 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 haven't heard about it, the square kilometer array, you know, it's it's so big here here in South Africa. You know, our president mentions it in 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 his speeches uh, in the State of the Nation address. Uh, uh, you know, we we have the African Union. The African Union uh, has made a declaration in support of the square kilometer array, and and it's really. <coughs> Excuse me. It's really uh, 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 taken the image of science and technology to a to a new level. Uh, um, uh, we're 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 saying that by exploring the universe, we're going to have so much. Uh, uh, we we want to take the continent uh, uh, um, uh, um, forward, and and Africa will be a world player in in expanding human knowledge. You guys made a com they made a comic book. I was so excited. Yeah, I gave away awesome. a few of these in our last giveaway. Um, I, I had an, a bunch of English and Afrikaans versions, but I only have the English left. I don't know what I, I must have given the others away. It's like, oh my god, there's a comic book. <laughs> yeah, the president, yeah. I, same thing in Chile. Like, the president came to the opening of the Alma Telescope. They had a, you know, a, a whole subway exhibit about radio astronomy, and I'm like, guys, why are we doing this in the U.S.? <laughs> Yeah, yeah, it's 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 a whole. It's such a cool vibe at the moment, and and uh, um, in uh, so 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 besides the SKA, there's there's lots of different things happening. There's the African VLBI network, very long baseline interferometry, which is about converting radio telescopes into. Uh, I mean, converting uh, uh, old communications uh, antenna into radio telescopes and, uh, um, and 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 by doing this all over Africa all over the African continent you can you can combine the signals and basically have effectively a continent sized telescope yeah. um, but there's various other countries where amazing things are happening in Ethiopia they just inaugurated two one meter class optical telescopes and they're going to be using these telescopes to to uh, to to build human capital in the in the East African region, whole East African region, they are now doing site testing for a site about 10 hours away from Addis Ababa, uh, um, which which seems to be one of the, which could potentially be one of the best sites in the world uh, um, uh, for optical telescopes. Uh, um, you know, the, um, in Burkina Faso, they've just they've just built a one meter class telescope. Uh, um, Nigeria has been working on a 25 meter radio telescope uh, there's 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 such a vibe now you know and 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 like science and technology is is really seen as something that will be the difference between uh, um, a country that can solve its own challenges compared to a country that relies on 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 international aid and and, and that sort of thing 
cool. Very cool. Ah, yeah, talking to you is always so inspiring, Kevin. <laughs> <What's> <laughs> the world now? <laughs> yay, yay. Um, Come join me in South Africa again. <laughs> What's that? Come join us in South Africa for a while. <laughs> Yeah, man. If I'm between jobs, I. Mm. <laughs> yeah, I got... anyone, anyone between jobs want to come and have a holiday in South Africa? Oh, you know, fun. we always we we have a the, uh, a big open plan office with a coffee machine and uh, oh. uh, uh, near the beaches as well. <laughs> I gotta I gotta convince my partner he wants to move there though. <laughs> <laughs> That's there's there's lots of opportunities in, in South Africa. That works. That works. <laughs> uh, we've got some some really happy comments about crowdsourcing in general. And uh, Guido says, if this if that takes if this ever takes off big time, it could mean the end of the patent age. So we're thinking really. Big oh, here. that's it's interesting. Yeah, yeah, that that would be awesome. Actually, uh, imagine imagine a free, completely free uh, uh, society. Mm. Right. Right. One, but one oh, where, so. you, yeah, you still don't want to be taken advantage of. If everyone was cooperating, then that's, yeah, holy thing. Holy yeah, exactly, thing. exactly. Because because then what happens if it gets into the wrong hands? And, right. you know, the thing is, is a society ready for 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 that as as a as a whole? Do we love each other enough? <laughs> That's 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 the question. Yes, yes. Well, I know our learning space commenters totally love each other and the world because they're awesome and they're the best. So <laughs> we have the best viewers on our show. I'm bragging a little bit. <laughs> awesome. <laughs> um, so thank you so much. Uh, also, oh, I also wanted to say we had a comment from uh, Rakesh Rao uh, a little earlier saying, happy to see this hangout, learn more about the OAD. <laughs> I'm happy to be part of an OAD-funded project. Yeah, he's doing a cool documentary in India about telescopes. Yeah, <laughs> cool. Also about radio telescopes or optical telescopes? Uh, no, well, all telescopes, observatories in India. Oh, okay, okay. So, so yeah, watch out for that. Uh, uh, his project uh, uh, should be. Uh, um, I, I can I can just send you the link now. Um, uh, but yeah, there's 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 lots of really cool. Really cool projects going on around the world. Very cool. <coughs> hey, thank you, Rakesh. Uh, oh yeah, there you put the link in there. Um, so that's yeah. over in your public outreach section. So. And uh, you know so, something as well to say to people. You know, uh, the, uh, people don't always have to like give time or skills. They can also just give advice. You know, if mm -hmm. you if you read through a project and you find you know uh, uh, here's something I've got an idea. You know, we want to encourage. Uh, Conversation as well, so so even a conversation might make a difference to 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 some projects. Uh, um, advice and where to go, uh, how to make things happen. Sounds good, awesome. All right, well I think we are about ready to wrap up. Um, just looking at the last few questions, uh, uh, Nancy Graziano added that Tesla. Tesla is going a long way towards ending the patent error after they released all. I did not know this. Apparently, the Tesla car released all their designs to the public domain. I, I heard about that. Yes, yes, yes. Uh, uh, but that, yeah, maybe, maybe we're we're heading there. That's so. <laughs> I had not heard that. That's really cool. And yes, Rakesh says all the telescopes. Yippee! <laughs> <laughs> I want to. I want to see what the GMRT is like. So I've never been there. Just cause it's <laughs> cool. Radio door. All right. You gotta watch Rakesh's documentary. Yay! <laughs> All right, so thank you, Kevin, so much for joining me. Thank you, even though it was late, yeah, and yeah. thank you for juggling children's bedtime around. And no problem, no problem. And, th and thanks, thanks for the patience to everyone that had to get stuck in traffic and stuff. Sorry it's about all good. that. Earlier. Well, um, this is this this show is being recorded. It'll be available on YouTube. Um, okay. And on the 365 Days of Astronomy podcast next week, so Richard Drum will have that audio up for us, um, so lots more people can listen and watch. Uh, so awesome. the website we've been talking about is uh, www.astro, the number four, dev, d e v dot org. So for anybody who's listening, and we'll put that link in the show notes as well, so you guys can check out all the cool stuff. Um, and yeah, thanks again so much, and uh, say good night to Carolina and, and 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 the babies, the Astro babies. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think I think she. Uh, yeah, I'm sure she says good night too. It's all good. Okay. <laughs> Could take a chance and see you. But <laughs> okay. Thank you. Thanks so much for joining us, and thank you everybody. There's no show next week. I'll be at the Astronomical Society of the Pacific Conference, um, and I think Georgia is 
going to be otherwise occupied as well. So there's no show next week. We'll be back in two weeks. So thanks, everyone, for watching. Thanks, Cosmo Chris. Thanks. <laughs> <laughs>